Welcome to Virtual Melt You Summer 2020. I'm Vince Thompson, founder, chairman, CEO of Melt, uh, and it gives me <clears throat> a lot of great pleasure today uh, to welcome each and every one of you to Virtual Melt University Summer 2020. Um, this is a very proud moment for me personally, very proud moment uh, in the history of uh, the 20 year history of, of, of Melt. This program has always been a tremendous labor of love for mine, of mine, and it's always been my dream to be able to share our program outside the walls of Melt with many of you. Due to obviously some unfortunate circumstances, the COVID-19 pandemic, we had a really, really robust class um, gathered this summer, 40 of you great kids. Uh, obviously the pandemic has created a situation for everybody where we're into the unknown, into the uh, uncharted waters and uncharted territory. So as with everybody, including you and myself, are making a pivot into uh, the unknown and the post-COVID world, we decided to take Melt You Virtual this summer and share it uh, with many of you. We've got uh, a lot of great kids signed in right now, and I'd like to encourage you to encourage your classmates, uh, your colleagues at the university, your career development officers, your professors, encourage everybody uh, to sign on for this great eight-week course. Uh, many companies are working new and virtual these days, and I'm proud to tell you that yesterday we launched our first series of podcasts with Michael Streck, Collegiate Sports Management Group, Todd Harris, a leader in the field of collegiate esports. We actually taped three more yesterday. So you're going to have a series of tremendous speakers this summer uh, through the series of podcasts uh, where you're going to see a lot of themes emerge. And we taught these themes even earlier uh, before the pandemic that life is not linear. Uh, obviously, you guys are all experiencing that right now, fortunately or unfortunately. Uh, life's going to throw you some curveballs. You're going to get knocked off the saddle, and it's not necessarily a bad thing to get knocked off the saddle, but it's how you get back on that saddle is really going to determine the winners here. But I'm not going to sugarcoat anything today or any day. You are already facing a very, very tough environment uh, for jobs. Everybody wants to be in the event business. Everybody wants to be in the sports marketing business. It was a very tough environment, tough climate, very competitive uh, before. And so now with more and more people out of the workforce, particularly in marketing services, uh, it's going to be a flood of other job applicants and entrants into this market. So the main purpose of this program is to prepare you uh, for the next uh, future, your next step coming out of, of college uh, to prepare you for that job. I've been very blessed, I've been very fortunate uh, due to my experiences at Auburn University, we'll talk about that in just a few minutes, we'll talk about the amazing speakers from some of the relationships that we've formed. But one of the primary purposes of this program is to enlighten you, inform you, and give you access to a lot of the, the, the people who could be future partners, employers, uh, bosses uh, one day. We want to provide that access for you. As I said, this has been a labor of love of mine for many, many years. I was very, very blessed. I grew up in a great little small town in rural lower Alabama called Chatham, Washington County. Uh, went to Auburn, the biggest place I had ever really been outside of maybe traveling to New Orleans for a Saints game or something. I wanted to be a sports writer, return to the Mobile Press Register and and right, and I had the fortunate encounter with a gentleman named David Housel at Auburn, who at the time was the sports information director. And it was in a class lecture, and he talked about, uh, wow, being in the press box and the sideline and the locker room and practice. And I'm like, man, that is a place that I really, really want to be. So I went up to him after class, and he, I asked him, I said, I want to be there, and he said, well come over this afternoon and begin volunteering and working. So if I hadn't have taken that shot, the arc of my career and life may have been a lot different. He also happened to be the 
faculty editor of the Auburn Plainsman, the student newspaper. He also happened to be the house father at Phi Gamma Delta Fiji, and I wound up joining over there. So me taking that shot really, really made a giant impact uh, in life. And so we're going to talk about that. I'm pleased to tell you uh, that I do travel to campuses uh, all over the country and speak about careers. I see a lot of resumes every year. I know what successful job seekers do. I try to impart that wisdom uh, on each of you. Um, and it's, it's my giving back uh, to the future generation of sports marketers and event marketers. And so, like I said, I would encourage uh, you to follow all summer. There's going to be a tremendous amount of benefits. I've got the new book coming out at the end of July, early August. Um, you had me at hello. What successful job seekers do to land that coveted first job in a post-COVID uh, environment. And it's, it's distilled and culled from tons of, of, of my experience, my knowledge, job interviews, things I see, and it's called from the speeches I give on the campuses. And so these weekly lunch and learns, today we're just gonna do the introduction to Melt You, but these weekly lunch and learns, each week will be a chapter uh, from the book. I just saw the uh, first four chapters, they're amazing. We're working with Forbes uh, and Advantage, a division of Forbes, to publish a book. And hopefully, uh, if I can impact one life uh, through Melt University, then my mission would have been fulfilled. You follow a lot, hundreds of kids who've been through our program. Uh, we've got tons of successful alumni coming out of Melt University. They are executives now at the Coca-Cola Company, Home Depot, Chick-fil-A, uh, Carter's Children Wear, the Falcons, the Bears, the Broncos, uh, sports information departments uh, all over the country, PGA. Uh, so part of this program, and you're going to see 30 to 40, 50 podcasts of the guests, and we're going to talk about that today, is I want to help you network. I want to help you link in. I want to help you build relationships. I want to help you open those doors. And so I'm very proud of our team. And feel free, by the way, feel free to ask questions throughout uh, this webcast. I'll answer them the best I can. And if not, we've got a tremendous team in place um, that is also contributing uh, a lot of time and resources and a labor of love for them uh, as well. Gigi Gonzalez, uh, who is a product of our Melt You System, Travis Rice, who is our VP of Account Services, and some tremendous participants from past summers, Sammy Bain, who's now uh, in his fourth summer working for Melt You, brilliant videographer, DJ, mixer, uh, very dear friend. I've seen him grow up. I'm so proud of him. He's a se rising senior at SMU. Carson Raines, uh, who is another great friend of Melt, student at Auburn University. Elliot Freeman, who's helping us with our surveys and analytics. One thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to constantly survey you throughout the summer. We want to know what you're thinking. We want, to, we want feedback on the program. We want feedback on everything else that you have going on in your life. We want to know what you're thinking. You are the most powerful and sophisticated set of generation of consumers. And so we're going to incorporate our thinking in relaying that information back to our corporate clients, which include the Coca-Cola Company, Aflac, uh, Intercontinental Hotel Group, Kia, uh, and a lot of other, other great companies, Body Armor, un, uh, Power Aid that we work with. Uh, Elliot is a student at Morehouse College. His father has been a very dear friend and client of mine for many years. Seth Freeman was at Russell, Coca-Cola, IHG, um, Buffalo Wild Wings, Chief Marketing Officer, very, very dear friend of mine. So we're proud of Elliot joining us. And Roberto Goizueta, whose father is a very dear friend of mine, fellow Auburn graduate. Roberto uh, is a fellow Auburn graduate. And so the eight-week course, as I said, we're going to have a tremendous podcast. I will tell you some of the people who are confirmed, and I will tell you some of the people that we've invited, and they're going to be some great big names for you uh, to be able to network with. And not only that, they're from many, many career disciplines um, of sports and event marketing, media, across the gamut. So if you're interested in becoming uh, an NFL broadcaster, we have Tracy Wilson, who is the lead CBS reporter 
uh, for the NFL. Very dear friend, she and I first worked together, I think in 2005 uh, at the St. Louis Final Four and have built a tremendous relationship uh, for the last 15 years. This is going to be a relationship building exercise for you. If you want to be in esports, Todd Harris, no greater resource in the world to learn and know and network about uh, this space. All of these speakers have generously donated their time because they want to help you as well. Ross Bjork is the athletic director of Texas A&M. He is a big time rising star in college athletics in the world. So if you want to be in college sports administration, he's a great one. Todd France, one of the biggest agents in the NFL with CAA. You want to be a sports agent? He's your guy. It, yesterday we interviewed Adam White, who uh, has started, and he's basically not much older than you guys are, but he has started a publication called Front Office Sports, which you should be subscribing to and following because it's filled with great nuggets of information. Jason Belzer, one of the top college basketball agents, he started another publication called Athletic Director U. That's another tremendous one uh, for you to follow. We've got Craig Silver coming on, who is the lead producer for CBS for SEC football. His crew comes to a lot of your campuses. That'll be another uh, opportunity for you to gain experience, network, and what I call build or pad your resume. Because one of the thematics that's going to come out during the summer is uh, this is about building brand you. And the college experience now is when you start building brand you. And part of that is building that resume, building that profile socially, building that profile on LinkedIn, networking with these uh, amazing corporate executives who many were just like uh, you are now and me, we were once in your place. Some of the others I've invited, my good friend Charles Barkley uh, on careers in MBA, Craig Williams, who is the president of the Jordan brand. Uh, we're trying to get Mr. Dan Cathy uh, who is the chairman of the Chick-fil-A organization. So maybe there are careers in marketing in the fast food and food service uh, industry. David McKillops, dear, dear friend, ran Six Flags for years, now is the CEO of Chuck E. Cheese. Derek Schiller runs the Atlanta Braves. Dina Gerson is the grand dame of Olympic marketing uh, on behalf of the Coca-Cola company. So if you have always had a dream to work in the Olympic space, in the Olympic movement, uh, she'll be uh, the, the perfect person, and she's an amazing speaker. Gary Stoken uh, runs the Chick-fil-A Bowl. You want to be in the bowl business? He's your guy. Jeff Cottrell, uh, one of the best marketers in the world, was at Starbucks, Converse, the Coca-Cola company. Um, he is amazing, going to share a lot of great, um, a lot of great information. Uh, we're also asking uh, some other great people, uh, Jim Cavalier. He has one of the leading social media influence uh, companies on college campuses called Influencer. Brilliant entrepreneur. The social media and athletes and name, image, and likeness is going to be a tremendous area for you. Jim Dinkins, my dear friend who gave me my first shot at Coca-Cola, is now the president of Coca-Cola North America. You want to be... Uh, with the Coca-Cola company, you want to learn insights from a great business leader, um, he's your guy. Who else we got on board? Uh, Jonathan Cates, founded many, many television networks, Bounce TV among those. If you want to be in the television network business, you listen to the Jonathan Cates uh, podcast. Mark Charty, look Mark Charty up. It's spelled C-I-A-R-D-I. Mark Charty is one of the most prolific Hollywood producers in the country, in the world, he produces all of Disney's sports films like Secretariat, Rookie, Miracle, Million Dollar Arm. So you want to break into Hollywood, um, he's your guy. Mike Fideli, CMO, Body Armor, uh, one of the most rising famous sports drinks uh, in the country. He was with Powerade. Uh, he was with Vitamin Water. You want to be in the beverage marketing business, he's the guy. Uh, my dear friend Paul Feinbaum, we all listen to him. We're going to invite him to talk about careers in broadcasting, uh, as well as Shannon Watkins, uh, the CMO of Aflac. Amazing, amazing lady. We've been together many years. Mm -hmm. You'll get a kick out of this one. Shaul Zislin, the founder of the Hangout Music Fest. 
And there may be some opportunities to do some internships for um, the Hangout Music Fest and the other uh, entities that Shaul owns down in Gulf Shores and the Orange Beach area. Steve Coonan, my dear friend, one of the most famous marketers in the world, the president of the Atlanta Hawks. If you're looking to get in NBA marketing and basketball, he's your guy. Derek Schiller with the Atlanta Braves, pro baseball marketing, he's your guy. Tim Zulowski, uh, marketing with the Atlanta Falcons, uh, he's the head of revenue, he's your guy. But not only that, they can open you up to all these other sports leagues. Darren, Darren Eels with Major League Soccer, Ty Votal with the uh, PGA Tour, and William White, who's the chief marketing officer of the largest retailer in the world, Walmart. And so my goal was to ask these people to volunteer their time. And so you're going to have a series of these great podcasts. You're going to be able to have the ability to communicate with them and contact with them through through LinkedIn. And so at the end of the summer, my goal is that you would have networked with some of the 40, 50, 60 of the top industry leaders. Uh, you would be able to connect with them. You would be able to begin, as I say, softening the target for future jobs and intern opportunities. Each week in this session, we're going to teach a chap copy of the chapter of the book. Uh, so I want to help you formulate how you build your brand how you build LinkedIn, how you build and manage your social media, how you turn the campus into the ultimate uh, professional laboratory, and how you rise to the top in the job search. You've committed uh, four years to college, uh, a lot of time, money, and resources, but the outcome is that coveted first job. Um, as I said, we're gonna have, it's a great eight-week course. At the end, we're gonna have a certification video submission contest and we want you to submit your video on what you learned from this summer and uh, and if you complete all the requirements through uh, melt you which is listening to uh, 90 to 100 percent I prefer 100 percent of the podcast 100 percent of the lunch and learn lessons uh, reposting our podcast and our lunch and learn lessons uh, on your social uh, sites, inviting other friends, at least one lucky person is going to win an all expenses paid internship in 2021 to Melt University when we come back live. And when you go back to campus, we're going to evolve and sign you into a paid virtual social media ambassador and influencer on your campus and introduce you to other paid opportunities with other major corporations and clients that we have um, across America. And if you complete uh, the requirements, you certainly will get uh, a copy of the book, um, Building Brand New, that I'm so proud uh, that it's a, a labor of love. And then coming out um, of this, what's the outcome? You're gonna have this giant Rolodex. You're gonna have this tremendous network of people because when I came out of of, uh, and, and, and we're going to talk about the college as the ultimate professional lab, and I got very, very lucky and blessed on that. I came out, I had a portfolio of 200 articles I had written, and I had built this great network, but I still had to crash through all those doors to build my business and get those jobs. And so coming out of this, we're going to build a career portal for you through our friends and through our relationships and through our clients and through our prospects. We want to open those doors for and behalf you, not only for those jobs, not only for those internships, helping grade your resume, help tailor your resume, we'll have a resume writing contest, help grade your LinkedIn, and those types of, of things as well. You'll have that certification program. You'll have uh, college credit if you've applied for it. And like I said, when, when, when you go back to your school, if CBS is broadcasting on your campus, if SEC Nation is broadcasting on your campus, if the Big Ten Network is broadcasting on your campus, if ESPN or College Game Day, we're gonna work with you and your professors and your career development officers and your classmates to line you up with those opportunities. And so when you get out of school, you're gonna have this giant network, you're gonna have this uh, giant resume pad, and I'll encourage each and one of you to get yourself some uh, handwritten note cards. And when you hear these people on the podcast, research them on LinkedIn, find out what their address is, write them a handwritten note, send them a copy of your resume, let them know how much you appreciated their advice and wisdom and time 
that they took for the podcast. It's called networking. It's called relationship building. My goal is to get you to the top five percentile of every job possibility that there is. If I can get you in that five percentile, you're going to get that job sooner or later because it's going to be a tough numbers game. I like to use sort of a fishing analogy. You got to make a hundred casts to maybe get six bites to land one or two fish. It's going to be a giant numbers game now based on what's going on uh, in the market. So like I said, um, all of these programs are going to be housed through a closed Facebook group um, where you can access students and alumni for research polls, opinions, photos, and surveys. We're going to showcase a lot of our successful alumni uh, throughout the summer. Um, you're going to see some amazing, amazing success stories. And, uh, and like I said, I regret, I'm, I'm sad that we don't have it live here, but I'm also really, really happy that we're able to share this with literally thousands of students uh, across the country. And if I can just help one of you land that job, then my mission will be fulfilled. And so uh, do not hesitate to reach out. So what I would encourage you to do is follow me personally on the Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn. I've got 19,000 followers on LinkedIn. It's a giant Rolodex for you to mine. I answer everybody and everybody will tell you that. I always try to answer. So follow me personally, follow Melt ATL socially, follow Melt U uh, socially, repost everything, encourage other kids uh, to, to, to sign up to this because the more we have, the bigger we'll be able to make this and we'll be able to share it with more of your classmates um, uh, across the country. And hopefully we'll be able to build this ne giant network that we've been, you know, we've been able to build over the last, we've been doing our intern program since 2000 um, in 2005. So we're gonna talk uh, a lot uh, about your career. This is why we're putting this effort and your brand. I want you to begin today, if you already haven't, thinking about yourself as a personal brand. Brand you. And everything you're gonna do from here on out is going to begin the positioning, the professional positioning of you for that first big job and building that big, uh, big network. And anything throughout the course that you see you want us to do or somebody you want us to try to, to get you in connected with or a podcast or something we ought to add to uh, these weekly lunch and learns, um, I'm open to you. And we'll evolve this and take this to the next level uh, based on the feedback uh, from you. So for a couple, of, um, this is sort of the, the first rough manuscript of the first four chapters, building brand new, how to use your college experience to find and win your first job. And I'll just kind of read the chapters real quick and then uh, uh, we'll close out the first session of Lunch and Learn Melt You. First chapter is gonna be called Take Your Shot. That's based on me taking that shot with David Housel after that journalism class. What's the worst that could happen? He'd tell me no, but I never would have known if I hadn't taken that shot. You're gonna learn that N-O spells the first two letters of just not yet. We're gonna keep grinding, we're gonna pursue our passion, but as Wayne Gretzky says, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. We're gonna teach you to not take the word no personal because people ask me what I do for a living and I say, well, I'm in the rejection business because I'm out there hustling just like you are. And as I say, the only failure uh, is the failure to try. So next chapter, let's see, I'm flipping some pages here. College is the ultimate professional laboratory. What do I mean by that? Look around you, volunteer at sports information, ticket office, game day operations, alumni, sponsors, multimedia rights holders, event management, game day operations, student government, student body, fraternity. And even if you're a barista at a coffee shop or a Starbucks, you're not just serving coffee. You're on the front lines of consumer service and business. And that's how you're gonna to begin to learn to package and position yourself uh, as you continue to grow in your uh, maturity on the college campus. Hey, I expect you to have fun. But let's don't forget what the outcome here is, is that all this time and investment. Chapter three will be 
See yourself as the brand. We've talked about that. We're going to talk about managing your profile on social media. We're going to call it the grandmother test. If you don't want your grandmother to see it, don't post it because I'm going to tell you, employers who are going to invest a lot of time and money into you for your first job, one of the first things we're going to do is, is, is read through your social profile. So we're going to talk about that. I'll, I'll show you some brand tricks on that. We're going to show you some brand tricks on LinkedIn and how to get noticed, how to get published, how to reach out, how to network, how to make that emotional connection with the alumni and sponsors from the school uh, that you're in. So when I get a generic email from a job applicant and it says nothing about themselves or nothing about me, I immediately flush that applicant. If I get it in and it's tailored and it's personal and you've shown me you've done the research, you know about Melt, you know about my background, that's going to go to the top of the list and that's going to put you in that contention and the consideration set. So we got a lot of great uh, things planned for you this summer. I am so excited and honored that you would just be joining us. Uh, it is my privilege and my pleasure to be helping you. Uh, and so if you've got any questions, uh, open it up for questions. And if I can answer any of them, uh, I'd be glad to, if you got any input. Um, and if not, we'll wrap up today's first session of Melt U. Hi, Leah, how are you today? As a recent graduate seeking my first full-time job, what are your thoughts on taking a job that isn't necessarily what we want to be doing? I'm just worried that I don't, if I don't start in the industry, it may be more difficult to get in later, but with the job market being so competitive, should we be more open to accepting the offer we get for now? <laughs> Leah, thank you for that question, and that is a great question. And you are totally correct. Uh, in this environment, uh, unless you can afford not to take the job, I would tell you that any job obviously is better than no job. Secondly, it's always easier to find a job with a job. The third thing is, is that, and many of you uh, might have been in the situation I was in when I first got out of college, um, I had to take what, what I, I could get. I moved to Birmingham, went to work for a bank. It was a disaster. I got fired from my first job. We'll talk about that uh, a little later, talking about falling off the saddle. Mm -hmm. but. It's easier to find a job with a job, and if you can afford it, it's easier to find the job in the geography of which you're in, if you can afford it. Because, for example, if you're in Atlanta, you know you're going to have to put dozens or hundreds of resumes out there. They may want to interview at the last interview at the last minute, and if you're able to do that at the last minute, as opposed to having to come in from somewhere else. But again, a lot of that's going to be dictated by your economic circumstances. But right now, during these times, I would say. Uh, do anything you can uh, to get that job because it's like I said it's it's really always a lot easier to find a job um, with a job and and the marketing services business has been decimated in one week the of March 16th uh, we were preparing to produce our activation for our 18th final form on behalf of the coca-cola company and we literally and we our busiest time of the year the spring because all live sports literally everything went away the music completely stopped and so a lot of pain and furloughs and layoffs in events in live sports in music in food festivals and so what's going to happen leah is that you're going to have a lot of other people who were gainfully employed in marketing services who are not now so they're out in the market and they're willing to accept a lesser job uh, for lesser money so it's further going to depress um, your opportunities not to depress you, but this is what this program is for, is to get you prepared to get above those guys as well. So I always say it's easier uh, to get a job with a job, but again, there's a lot of other circumstances, but, uh, but, but I would, uh, you know, as we teach you to how to build your resume, college being the professional lab, and it's not necessarily about the grades. I didn't make the greatest grades, but my resume showed effort, initiative, self-starting and discipline and those are the things that you want to come through in your resume and those are things you want to uh, communicate to a future em employer so this is all part of that uh, all part of that uh, that process we're going to teach you about so um, I would tell you to if you if you can be more open to accepting uh, uh, an offer uh, right now particularly because we don't really know when we don't we we think live sports is coming back 
Some of them are coming back. Some may come back with fans. Some may not. There may be another um, surge of this virus in the fall. We're all dealing in equally uncharted, unknown waters. So if there's anything out there you can get, I would strongly encourage you to get that. Dylan Lamb, what degree did I receive from Auburn? I received a communications and PR degree with an emphasis on journalism, but I also spent four years working in sports information, and so I was able to practice my trade and practice my craft. Um, and I, like I said, I had this giant portfolio of 200 articles when I came out, which was even put me more ahead of the class. Camilo Jimenez, is this just for recent grads? Uh, no, let me tell you, as a matter of fact, a couple things. If there's anybody out there that's employed or unemployed uh, or make, wants to make career transitions, absolutely I encourage everybody to join. This is going to be the ultimate networking tool. In fact, I know other people have reached out to me and said, hey, we want to participate, we want to listen, we want to learn. So what I will tell you is you're never too old to learn. You're never too old to st stop learning. I never stop learning. I read 25, 30, 40 publications every day. It drives my staff crazy because I share a lot of these articles, but I read every industry publication that I can, Ad Age, Ad Week, IEG, Sports Business Journal, Front Office, Sports Techie, uh, D1 Ticker, um, Axios, I mean, Wall Street Journal, all of these, I'm mining for opportunities, I'm mining for relationships, I'm mining for networks. So um, absolutely, um, absolutely, we're open uh, for, for, for anybody. It's kind of one of the unexpected great consequences of, of converting this virtual is that in this time of need and pandemic crisis, we may be able to help hundreds of people uh, across the country. Um, Julia, Julia Gardner, I'm new in my major and still trying to decide what exactly I want to do. Do you have any tips on figuring out what jobs might fit best into a person's passions? Well, Julia, that you just hit the sweet spot of what I'd love to tell you. Do what you love, the money will follow. Practice and pursue your passion with zeal. I had a passion for sports. I played, I wasn't very good, but I loved sports and I love to write about it and I love to write my heroes and so I wasn't going to be denied my passion. Many, many people are going to tell you don't pursue your passion or that's not going to pay you or you're not going to be able to support yourself. But I'm telling you, um, if you love your job, you'll never work a day in your life and do what you love and the money um, will follow. Grayson Wyndham, you suggest start thinking of ourselves as our own brand. What steps did you take in the early days of your career to make your brand stand out? Uh, great question, Grayson. Uh, I will tell you this, I got some business cards, I got some handwritten note cards, and if I was driving Dick Vitale or Paul Feinbaum or any of these famous people to the airport after they covered an Auburn game or was dropping them off at a hotel, I always made sure that I made that impression. I always made sure I asked them about themselves and their family. I made that emotional connection with that person. I gave them my business card. I asked them a way to contact them, and then I took the time to write that handwritten note. And I know everybody's rolling their eyes. Oh, we text, we tweet, we email. But I'm telling you, writing a handwritten note is a lost art. So then, uh, so that's a big one right there. Make friends with all your professors. Make friends with your career development. Make search LinkedIn for alumni from your school because that's low hanging fruit from an emotional connection perspective. If I get an email, if I get a great email from a student, I always answer. But if somebody says, hey, Mr. Thompson, War Eagle, et cetera, et cetera, I'm going to notice that because I know they've done research on me and they know I went to Auburn. And obviously that's a passion point of mine because I went to Auburn. And so all of these little things that you're doing, look who the sponsors are of your, uh, of your school, your school athletic network. They obviously have a vested interest in there. Those may be opportunities in internship uh, programs because many times a sponsor of that school, say the Auburn Network, may have an emotional tie to that as well. Search the alumni. I use Auburn as an example a lot. Tim Cook, CEO of Apple, Auburn alum. He's probably gonna answer your email or make sure somebody does because of that emotional connection. Shelby Rusher, do we have someone from the hotel or culinary management industry speaking to us this summer? I have in interest in this area of what Melt does. As a matter of fact, we're going to have a lot of them, um, Shelby. Uh, we work with International uh, Inter Intercontinental Hotel Group. They own Holiday Inn. They own Holiday Inn Express. They own many, many great brands. 
Uh, we'll have um, uh, TJ Abrams, who's a dear, dear friend, who's a global leader in marketing. Uh, Jen Gribble, who's a global leader in market. Brian McKinnis is the CMO. So uh, absolutely, we'll have uh, some, some really, really good people to network you in. Seth Freeman was uh, a marketing executive at IHG before he went to Buffalo Wild Wings. So absolutely, we'll check that box. Jay Caston really enjoyed Todd DeHarris' podcast on esports. Do you think esports will sustain the growth and popularity it has had during this time without live traditional sports? I think that esports is the tip of the gigantic uh, iceberg. And if you can figure out a way to carve out a career in it now, uh, you're going to look down the road uh, 10 or 20 years. I, I think it's really literally scratching the surface in the tip of the iceberg. So anybody interested in esports, Todd Harris is absolutely the best expert there is. He's part of an organization called uh, NACE. So he can help introduce you to that. That's kind of the NCA of esports. Michael Schreck is, represents 1,200 schools and conferences at sort of the mid-tier. He's organizing esports within that. So those two first podcasts out of the, out of the box were giant uh, as well. Uh, Kendall Moss, would you recommend pursuing a master's degree since there are un many unknowns in the coming months regarding the state of the economy and job opportunities in the world of sports? I will tell you any time that you can afford the time and money and effort uh, to pursue a higher degree and, and a higher education, absolutely do it. And a lot of the major CPGs, consumer packaged goods companies, um, they prefer you to have that master's degree. So if you have the time and the money and the energy to do it, absolutely, uh, it, never, it never hurts to pursue degrees in higher education. Chad Dyke, uh, Dyche, I'm an MBA. MSF candidate AU with undergrads in marketing, exercise scientists interested in the sports field. Are there going to be any finance related possibilities uh, with this program? So I'm assuming when you say finance related opportunities, it's a couple things. One, within this agency, absolutely. As a matter of fact, uh, three of our staff members in the finance department came out of Melt U. So absolutely, uh, and if not, with every organization that you're gonna hear the podcast, the finance function of that organization is going to be is obviously very important, and they can network you into those finance departments and those CF, CFOs within those organizations. So look at it as an extension of 50 to 60 finance-related opportunities uh, as well. Um, Brid Brigitta pa Packler, I have numerous job insurance in my resume, most being short-term. Is that something that would make employers think I can't hold down a job, or would it show I have experience, or is it too overwhelming trying to include everything? Well, I will tell you a couple things. At your age, your resume should only be on one page. So, so uh, because obviously you, have a, you don't have enough experience to make it more than one page and, and, and people have a 10 second attention span when these things are coming through. But I don't think it shows uh, any weakness or any particular strength. I, I think it shows curiosity. And you may wanna point out of that in your lead of your resume like I am a curiosity seeking person in this industry and I've tried my hand at many things and I think this is how I can add value to your organization through this collection of experiences. So I don't see it uh, as a weakness. Now if you've job hop to four jobs in the last two years uh, that could be a red flag but you working to build this experience and these relationships I don't I don't think that's a, um, I don't think that's a, a, a negative at all. Megan Dance, thanks for first like, great lesson today. Do you find it too pushy to ask for an opportunity right off the bat or is it to better build a relationship and then ask? Um, that's a great question because I'm probably the most aggressive guy in the business that you're ever gonna meet. But I am a firm believer in building the relationship. I am a firm believer in understanding your target, both personally and professionally. So for me instance, you know I went to Auburn. You know I love sports. You know we've represented Coca-Cola for 20 years. You know I love the ocean and those types of things. And so you can begin that dialogue. I call it sort of interviewing the interviewer. You're sort of flipping the script. So you're softening the target. You're building that relationship um, as well. And so um, I'm an advocate of that. I'm also an advocate of sort of a soft approach sometimes. So if you'll write me and say I'd like some advice or I'd like some introduction to somebody at Coca-Cola, you're bringing me into your world. You're, you're including me. You're, you're uh, playing to my ego, quite frankly. And, and, and everybody has a healthy ego. And, and so, so I always like to sort of set that relationship 
up if you can. Now, if you see an opportunity within a particular organization, know your target, know the opportunity, and if you wanna, you wanna take the shot or ask for the order, certainly uh, do that. Um, let's see, Chad, I guess a better question would be if the program would extend and be uh, applicable to that realm. Uh, as best I can understand what you're saying is um, that um, if are there are opportunities within the fan finance department of MELT, like I said, abso absolutely uh, there, uh, there, there are. And then, like I said, Tim Zolowski is the chief revenue officer of all of Mr. Arthur Blank's uh, companies, and he, you know, he's over everything, the soccer, the football, the stadium, and all that. He's going to be a great resource for you. Um, as well, Jonathan Cates, who's uh, we just taped his podcast um, yesterday or a day or two ago. Um, he has started multiple television networks. He's brought Court TV back, um, the financial finance piece of, of, of broadcast and cable television and OTT and over the air and all that are huge as well. Uh, Roberto goes, well, how are you able to create connections with companies like Coca-Cola so early on? Great question and I'll tell you Coca-Cola has been so so very good to me but it started early on I had a passion for Coke and Coca-Cola my dad owned a grocery store I stocked uh, the old Coca-Cola coolers with the eight ounce glass bottles at the time when I was living in Birmingham post Auburn there's a great family that owns a tremendous bottler there I built relationships with them and then when I decided to take my big plunge in Atlanta in 2000 I asked the family in Birmingham uh, to open some doors at uh, Coca-Cola, and I was fortunate to meet a gentleman named Jim Dinkins uh, who, um, who took me in. Um, he saw me building the business. He saw my values, and I had the opportunity to take that shot with him in activating our first uh, Final Four. So you got to remember, even people at my level or other levels of these companies, we were just like you one day. And maybe many of us have kids that are you right now. In fact, I do. My son, Carter, 20-year-old, is a sophomore at Georgia. So if you know those things and you make all these approaches relatable, you can, you can knock these doors down because you possess the tools in the palm of your hand to do it. In the old days, I had to go to the library and look up the Yellow Pages or the Encyclopedia or some resource guide. There's no excuse for you guys not being able to help possess all this information out of your hand. Um, Katie Dunn, in terms of entry-level jobs, would you suggest including employment on a resume, even if it's not applicable to the job you're applying for, or would you rather hear about applicable coursework and projects? Um, I would, Katie, I would suggest a hybrid approach, because as I said, even if you worked your way through school in a restaurant or a coffee shop, it's the way you position the experience as, rel as relates to the brand and it relates to the experience to the job. So if you say, hey, I was on the front lines of customer service serving 100 patrons a day or guests a day, that's very relevant in anything that you do. Or if you're working at the bookstore, you're working at the ticket office. So you can frame and, and position that. And I'm also going to encourage you to, you'll have the core part of your resume, but then you'll also, sort of like a donut, but then you'll want to customize it or tailor it uh, with the header and the objective uh, as you approach different firms and different people in different places because what employers want to know is how are you going to bring value to that organization if they're going to invest those time, money, and resources to you. So the way the, the, the job search is an audition. You're going to um, marry like you date. So you're trying to display to that employer how you would be as a future employee. So never forget, like I said, when I get these resumes and they're like, Hey, here's my resume, and, and uh, it's to you know, info at Melt ATL, and I need to make X. I never even open them because they're showing me that effort right then. It's only as important as you're going to make it. So I would suggest a hybrid approach. Uh, Serena Holmes, I'm an inspiring graphic designer, more specifically for sports marketing. However, I've heard these positions are hard to get due to strong competition. Any advice on how to make myself stand out in the crowd? Uh, absolutely, it's all about your brand. And so I tend to see that a lot of graphic designers are actually more creative in their approach than, say, a traditional you know, writer or journalist or, or PR major or something like that because it's based on how you've been trained. So the subject line is always important. Dear Mr. Thompson, War Eagle, aspiring brilliant graphic designer, looking to break into a great company like Mel. Well, of course I'm going to open your, your resume. 
Also, the other thing on an email to busy people, remove as many barriers to opening as you can. If I've got to jump through seven hoops to open your portfolio, or it leads me uh, to something that's not easy to open, I'm probably going to jump ship because you're going to get, it's like driving by a billboard on the interstate. You're going to get about 10 seconds of my time. So I would tell you, uh, make it short, quick, simple, sweet. Um, and also that's design it with a nice creative approach um, as well. And then make it simple for somebody to open. And, 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 and we get a lot of, like I said, it is tough and it's competitive, but also make sure that the quality of the work you're sending represents the best quality of the work that you've done. See, one more, Tim Moore. Fence, someone who's had numerous interests in media and digital marketing arenas, another lost artist, a cover letter in addition to the intro email. Could you go over the importance of utilizing a personal cover letter when sending resumes? The first thing, guys, that, that I like to see is I actually like to see a written version first because that shows me that you've taken the time and the effort to send a really nice, and, and by the way, the cover letter doesn't have to be really formal. The cover letter can be a nice, really handwritten note saying, hey, Mr. Thompson, here's my resume, you know, uh, saw you went to Auburn, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'll follow up with an email to s see if I can get an appointment with you or your HR or some other people. And so then follow up with that. And maybe you, you friend me on LinkedIn, then maybe you follow up with an email saying, hey, um, I sent you the, the resume. So, so think about this in the numbers game, you've now hit me three times. You've reached, you've made the effort to reach out to me in writing You've made the reach, effort to reach out to me on LinkedIn. You've made the effort to reach out to me via email. And so you're building that cadence of communication to open that door. Because it's just not, it's, you know, people go, oh, we, we can't get a job out there. And I'm like, well, no kidding, because you're not putting the maximum amount of effort. Because let me tell you, I'm very successful in closing business, but rarely do I close them on the first phone call. It may take days and weeks and months or years sometimes. Uh, and so, uh, again, it's a numbers and, a, and, a, and an effort game. And, and, and so, uh, as I said, it's only as important uh, as you make it. Morgan Sharp, is everything is transition online. Do you have any advice on how to make a lasting first impression over the phone or computer during an interview? Um, I don't think the basics change. I think that um, whether you're on Zoom uh, you're on the phone. Uh, you got to bring the heat. You got to be prepared. You got to know. We'll use me as an example. You got to know things about me because you're showing me um, that you've done your research and your homework. You're showing me how you're going to be a great employee. You're showing me how you're going to manage on the front lines of clients or event productions and those types of things. So what I will tell you, and I'll go back to this, it's only as important as you make it. So if you're on a Zoom, Zoom interview, you know, at least from the top down, dress nice, look the camera in the eye, do everything that you would normally do in that situation. You know, um, have a prepared approach of why you would add value to the organization. Know everything there is about that job and that hiring person and that organization. Uh, turn your dadgum phone off during the interview. There's nothing more distracting. I don't care what environment it is. These basics don't change. And so because don't forget, it's a blind date, it's an audition, and you're communic and you only have one chance to make a great first impression. Drew Threlkhead, will you have anyone on to talk about the new NIL rule having a creation of new job opportunities on campuses? Well, in fact, we already have. Uh, Michael Shrek is a leader in that. Uh, we taped one yesterday with Jason Belzer. He is a leader in that. And since I stepped foot on Auburn campus 40 years ago, I've had a passion to create uh, other financial and revenue opportunities for student athletes. So I'm probably one of the biggest, most passionate advocates for this. Jim Cavale, C-A-V-A-L-E. Uh, he has a company called Influencer, N uh, N F L C R. Uh, he's a giant leader in this. You're going to have tremendous leaders because I will tell you there's going to be opportunities within the athletic department but 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 Melt U is also going to create these opportunities for you as well because I've long been an advocate that student athletes should be able to monetize their name image and likeness similar to my son can do uh, at Georgia right now so if that's an area of growth you're looking into you've absolutely come um, 
to the right place and do I think two giant areas on campus are going to be job opportunities one is name image and likeness and the other one is um, Collegiate esports. I think that there's going to be a lot of great opportunities in game day operations in the post COVID world um, as well. So, with everything going on in the collegiate sports arena um, with the COVID and the NFL and NIL, in chaos, there's opportunity. So, right now, there's going to be more opportunities for you to pad your resume and make money and gain that experience and build those relationships now more, I think than uh, there ever has. And I know that this pandemic has been tough on all of us uh, if you haven't lost any loved one, but there's gonna be a lot of great silver linings and, and career opportunities coming to this, such as uh, Virtual Melt University. That's it? Wow, what an hour. What a privilege, what an honor. Thank you so much. Uh, as you can tell, I have a passion for this program. I love the fact that you guys are participating Please share this out with your friends and your classmates uh, and your teachers and your professors and your career developers. Um, our goal is to have thousands of kids this summer. We want to impact lives. And so I'm here for it. Uh, our team, our staff's here for it. Uh, you got a glimpse today of what this is going to be like. And it's going to be so exciting. Listen to those first two podcasts. We've got two tremendous ones coming back um, tomorrow. And we've got some really, I've got some great invitations out. Barkley, LeBron, Ron Seacrest, um, you know, Mike Rapino of Live Nation, uh, Mark Cuban of the, of, 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 of the Dallas Mavericks. We've got some tremendous ones. Dave Portnoy from Barstool, Paul Feinbaum. So uh, we're going to have a lot of great surprises for you this summer. So um, one more anonymous. I'm looking to continue my education this fall. Do you suggest... MS and global sports management or something specific like a marketing strategies. If you're going to put the time, money, and effort into a master's, I would get as much business and finance training as I could, more so than sort of, you know, it, but unless it's specifically to sports administration and you want to be in the college athletic because one thing I was woefully inadequate is that I wasn't able to get as much finance training uh, that I would have wanted to. So um, I would tell you uh, I would go – more traditional to learn more about the business with maybe a, a marketing top spin on it. But uh, guys, what an hour, what an honor. Um, I'm Vince Thompson, founder, chairman, CEO of Melt. Welcome to a great summer. Welcome to a great summer of virtual Melt University, summer 2020. We'll see you next Wednesday live.